Hello, friends and family. Thank you again for joining me. We're going to jump into chapter two of our curriculum guide discussing Ernest from Earth. We're focusing on social awareness again with regards to our social emotional learning competencies. We're still setting up the story. And in chapter two, I get into more details about the, the setting, where we really are. So the first question on the curriculum guide is, what discovery in the middle of the 21st century led to Earth's era of peace and prosperity? So in the setting that I've created here, it's a future Earth. It's this seemingly idyllic sort of utopian Earth of the future where war, poverty, hunger, greed, those things have gone to the wayside. And I postulate that the reason this happened or the event that is sort of looked at as leading to all of this is humans discovering how to jump, the term that I use, jump through space-time, allowing them to explore the universe beyond our solar system to instantly arrive at some other place light years from here. I ask, in what ways did the discovery benefit Earth? The things that I know were humans are able to gather natural resources from across the galaxy with an overabundance of natural resources. They're able to wipe out things like poverty and hunger and greed. I create this very idyllic situation. Not that I necessarily even think that we would be able to wipe out those problems by such a discovery that even if we had unlimited resources, the, the more jaded part of me thinks we would probably still have people fighting to control those things and build wealth and not necessarily share that abundance. But in this world, I wanted to create this initial setting that seemed, seemed like a possibility. That seemed like the dream. That seemed like that maybe this could be the thing. That this could be the thing to aim at. That maybe we could get to a point where we are eliminating these things, where a lot of our social issues of today are just history, are just things of the past that we would look back on and study. And I use that as a contrast for later elements of the story. And I'll get deeper into this as we progress on, but I also use it as, as an indication of Ernest's development throughout the story. That he starts out very much as an innocent and sees things as very idyllic. And not to give away too much, but later on in the story, he has to ask some questions of himself. And he has to ask some questions about whether his society, whether how he grew up was as perfect as he thought it was. But I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of my, myself. The other thing that allowed Earth to benefit in this future scenario is that they discovered life on other planets. It was confirmed, made definitive that we human beings were not the only life in the galaxy, in the universe. And that created a shift in mentality. 
as the human race observed other planets and other societies, it allowed Earth as a collective to become a closer community, to look more towards discovery and focus less on our, our own bickering, our own problems that it put things in perspective in some way to realize that we were not the only life on earth. The next question on the curriculum guide is identify, it's not really a question, statement, identify the three types of life supporting planets and what qualities place planets in each category. So I came up with three categories. So the early development planets that support life, but they don't have human-like inhabitants. Don't have what we consider human societies, settlements, that sort of thing. Mid-developed planets are then planets that have human-like, humanoid societies that have formed, and then in inhabitants of advanced planets have the ability to travel outside their solar system. But in this story, Earth is the only advanced planet that's been discovered. They've discovered many planets that have human-like entities living in structured societies, but they have yet to find a society as technologically advanced as our own. That was something I wanted to do because I'm a big sci-fi fan. This book has a science fiction element. But a lot of the times the image that we get of connecting with extraterrestrials, connecting with life from other planets is that this other life will be far more technically advanced than us and they will come here or in some stories, some ideas, they've already been coming here to study us, whatever, and then at some point we make contact. I wanted to flip that around. What if Earth was that advanced society and we're the ones who are going out across the universe studying other cultures, other planets, other life that's out there. And what if we're the ones who seem to be the most advanced? We're the ones who have to, to go out and learn and discover. The next question is, or the next topic, describe Earth in the 22nd century. Kind of covered that. It's an earth where it's peace, it's prosperity. Human beings are exploring and examining the universe. And I mentioned that basically anyone is able to travel across galaxies. That families are able to travel through space, go to different planets, in the same way that we would take a highway road trip in our current times. What is the UGE? The UGE is the United Governments of Earth. So in this story, all of the governments of Earth have united to form sort of one governing body where they're making decisions as a, as a collective. Are people from Earth able to interact with people on mid-developed planets? This is something that I put in where... Basically, scientists, whoever, are studying these mid-developed planets that have human-like societies. They're studying them from afar. They're using high-tech satellites to observe. They're maybe sending down probes or doing things like that. But we're not interacting with them socially. We're not making connections. And it was decided by the UGE, the United Governments of Earth, that it would be best to not interfere, to let these mid-developed planets progress naturally. Then I ask, 
do you think this is a good policy? And I want students to defend their stance. You could come up on either side. The student could land on, on either side of the fence with this. You might say that it's a good policy because Earth was able to go through its progression, apparently unfettered to reach this point. Maybe it's best to study, learn, but not interfere with these societies that have come along. One could land on the other side and say, well, if we were to make contact and share ideas and share technology it would only advance those settlements and it may even increase our sharing of ideas and technology. There's not a right or wrong answer there. It's just something to consider and it becomes a, a point of consideration for Ernest throughout the story. Whether it was the appropriate thing to do to be sort of hands off, hands off and observational with this. Based on what we know from the first two chapters, predict what might happen next. Again, answers may vary. But the title of the book is Ernest from Earth. We're setting up that people can travel to other planets, can observe other societies, but not interact with those societies. I don't want to give too much away, but those are all things to consider. What central themes may be emerging? We might be, again, looking at different social issues, sociological issues, different global issues. It had quite a few vocabulary words, potential vocabulary words in this chapter. And then for our extended thinking, I want us to just brainstorm. Imagine what the world would be like 100 years from now. They could write a short story, draw a picture, create a collage. But I want students to consider what world problems will hopefully be solved or at least diminished and what new problems will arise. It's always good to look at how much our world has changed in the last hundred years and as technology continues to advance more and more rapidly how might things change in another hundred years that's just a fun thing to consider i think i enjoyed that part of of writing the book it was like okay well what if how would i picture the world and i was being very optimistic like, what if this happened what if we could sort of create, and, and I honestly drew from sort of like the, the Gene Roddenberry Star Trek version of we're traveling through the galaxy to learn and discover and we have apparently solved a lot of these problems on Earth. We maybe find throughout the story that we haven't solved these problems as much as we think, but it is... It is a world where we have addressed a lot of the social issues that we continue to see in our contemporary society. That kind of wraps up the curriculum guide questions for this week, for this chapter. Thank you for joining, and we'll continue with Chapter 3 next time. Until then, much love.